everyone, I'm Stephen Boyle. This is my fourth official winter outlook for 2012-2013. So uh, let's look at what's going on here. And um, for, we're going to first look at the models, and then we're going to move on to some of my graphics I created. Now, for those of you who watched my chat, this is going to look very familiar. Um, but I'm doing this because there's a lot of people who said they wanted a video a cold, you know, hard video, so I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to start trying to make videos more often, uh, but lately it's been very hectic around here. But anyway, um, so this is the surface air temperatures and what they're predicting for the, uh, for the course of this year. Notice one thing is that mostly the whole country co cooler than average. I mean, yeah, yeah, a little warmer up in here, but uh, you know what? Compared to last year, I mean, let's look at last year at this time, what they were predicting. I mean, that's a far cry from what they were predicting um, last year at this time. So that's a major difference. Um, I mean, you can really see the, the, the differences here. Um, just going back a year. I mean, look at this. Okay, notice how these parts of, of the world were being predicted as a as below average and now we move to September of 2012 and look at how these regions are expected to be above average that's one major change and also notice how Australia is is being expected to see above average conditions and again it's not winter down there it's going to be summer down there so they're looking pretty warm, and that's a major change because they were very cold last summer, uh, which was our uh, which was our last winter. But again, they have opposite seasons as we do. But in any case, um, that's a very good observation to look at. I mean, um, not only that, but if you look at Europe, they were being predicted as seeing um, below average conditions last last year. Um, you know, and then of course the the main part though was was really Alaska and portions of Canada. I mean, that was really where it all was. Then we look at this year, and you see how it just changes. I mean, you see how most of the United States is below average. Now we have Europe above average, northern portions of Russia, and also most of Alaska. So this is a very big revelation when it comes in terms of what's actually going to happen this year. And, you know, the Jams Tech model was right on the head when it came in terms of what was going to happen with the uh, winter last year. Now looking at precipitation, which is really what we want to look at when it comes in terms of snows, this is really good because notice how we have this big area of dry in the west. This is very important because this indicates that we will have what we, it looks like a positive PNA plus a cold PDO. This all translates into a pattern, something like this, which therefore the storm track will be favoring um, storms coming either from down here up the east coast or coming up from here and then down and then up the east coast. Also, some of these uh, systems that will be coming into Canada from it coming in from Canada into the United States. The United States is actually looking like one of the hot spots this year when it comes in terms of precipitation. I mean, you can see the United States as well as Alaska, um, but really the United States, uh, the eastern United States, is looking like the hot spot. Also, these portions of uh, the Pacific. Uh, which is also very important as well. So that's the situation um, when it comes in terms of what the models are pre being predicting. And I wanted to show this to you guys because this is the most recent update. This actually came out today. Um, it, it says the first, but it takes 20 days for this to actually kind of update itself. So this is new information for me, which is really nice because we're now starting to close in on that or on the winter now so this is very good so this is my first frost forecast and I made this back in a couple weeks ago 
and I'm actually pretty happy about what's going on here because these regions actually have already seen their first frost. Now, my friend told me that we did have some frosts around here, but I'm not going to buy that um, until we actually have a reported frost from the National Weather Service. I'm not going to say that that happened, but actually... I'm actually quite happy about what's going on into these regions because these regions are actually all under um, frost advisories today or freeze warnings or something. Um, actually, we'll go to weather.gov and I'll actually show you um, what's going on. You'll see for yourself. I mean, these frost are these frost or freeze warnings. Um, I believe. I think these are freeze watches. Yeah, uh, we're talking about freezes. We're talking about freezes for all of eastern Wisconsin, all the way down to Iowa. So if you look at this, I mean, I have portions of Iowa into November. So this is really a lot earlier than what I was pre predicting for some areas. Very, very good. Um, portions of Minnesota, they're under a freeze warning or a freeze watch as well. Whoops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> um yeah, I'm very happy here. So, um, again, I think these regions will probably be about what I was, what I said. Um, maybe even earlier. We'll see what happens with that. But I'm actually pretty happy with the way how everything is turning out. So here's the temperatures, and you probably already saw a quick glance at this. So this is a temperature outlook for this upcoming winter. And this is very important because... I do think that most likely we're actually going to see probably some of this warmer weather being reserved down towards these regions. We may actually have slightly below average conditions for all of these areas uh, in here. And, you know, it's looking like the majority of the country will be below average this year. There's really no area that, I, that I'm that i seeing where it's going to be really above average. Um, it was originally looking like the Northwest would be, but at this particular time, um, that's actually not going to happen. It looks like they're going to be below average for uh, temperatures. So that's what's going on. You can see at this particular point, this will probably change, though. The Northeast, to me, looks like they're going to get into some pretty good cold Definitely. I mean, the AO is starting to go negative. Um, I also have to talk about a couple of other things as well, but because um, I know some people have been putting out, oh, this this upcoming October will be warm, but not really. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain what's going on here in just a few minutes. But in any case, these are the potential storm tracks for this upcoming winter. And you can see we have this blue line right in here is... Um, Alberta clippers systems. Okay, these are Alberta clippers, and Alberta clippers they usually bring in a very, very cold air behind them, and they also bring in very intense snows. These are almost what you could call the winter time cold fronts. Okay, and you know how when we get a cold front during the summer, we get really intense thunderstorms. Well, this brings very intense bands of snow, um, sometimes even thunder snow. And these, these are very intense systems, and they bring, you know, a one big band of snow, and it usually comes through. So these are almost what you could almost resemble with your summertime thunderstorms, but except this is a wintertime heavy snow event. And it, and it doesn't last the whole day, but when it does happen, it can really cause some major issues because it's a very quick fallen snow. Um, and then we have a couple of other tracks that I'm, I'm thinking might happen. We have this one here, and then we have this one here. These two tracks are very important because um, they will be what drives Canada and also the Midwest into getting above average snowfall. I believe the, um, one, air, the, the one track that we will see a lot is this one. And this one will be coming down from portions of Canada and they will come down through the Ohio River Valley and then come up the East Coast. Therefore, given the East Coast, the Northeast, and the Ohio River Valley and the Midwest some, some very good snows. But then, of course, we have our main we have our main track, which is this red one. This is the main track for the year. 
okay we also have uh, this this red one is the main one for the whole winter of this year this is what's going to be our driving force because why because this is what's going to be our negative our negative nao we have a negative nao being predicted for this upcoming winter which when we get negative nao that means the storm track tilts negative which is what it's doing here and with that being said um you can normally you can normally see uh, storms coming down into the Gulf of Mexico and then generating up the up the East Coast. And we've already even seen one of these events occur uh, just last week where we had a track somewhat like this, and it really gave most of the East and the Northeast some pretty intense rain. So that sort of gives you a little bit of a preview of what's to come. Um, and, and it's very good. And you can see most of these tracks converge into the northeast so this is a very good scenario for those of us who really like the winter um this is very good and i am really looking forward to this winter and the track and, and tracking it here is the winter precipitation outlook this is what we all want to see i believe at this particular port this particular portion will be the snowiest region of the country the east coast the major cities the i-95 quarter Okay, we will have a winter battle zone, which is this area in pink. Okay, um, this is where we'll see ice, storms, possibly mixed precipitation. Uh, but don't get mad because you'll probably see rain from time to time as well. So, again, it's that battle zone. Then we have above average snowfall through these regions. Um, not well above average, but definitely above average. And, of course, like I said, this region will be the region where we see the heart of the snowfall. Possibly around average into these regions, around to below average. We'll have to see what happens. But um, at this particular point, that's what it's looking like when it comes in terms of snowfall and uh, the precipitation for this upcoming winter. So um, that's overall what it's looking like at this particular time. If we... I do want to show you something right before we go here. Um, this is, again, the teleconnections, which are very important when it comes in terms of um, predicting what's going to happen here. We look at, remember I was talking about the AO and the NAO. Well, this is what the predicted AO is is being shown at this particular time. We are below right, we are fairly negative right now. We want to see negative AO for cold weather. And you can see we will be on this upward trend, but then we brief, then we all of a sudden go back down, which is very good. This only indicates probably a day or two of warm weather, and then we start really crashing down after that, um, which is good. Here's the A N A O, and you can sort of see, yeah, negative. We may go briefly positive, but then it looks like we'll be going negative after uh, the uh, after uh, the beginning of October. So again, uh, that's what it's looking like at this particular point. Then the PNA, right now it's positive. It will be going negative at the beginning of October, but then after that it goes positive once we get after October 1st. So right now it looks like uh, around the 1st of October will not be a good time for people in the Northeast. That'll probably be when we start seeing those warmer conditions coming back in, but then after that, we start talking about much better conditions and cooler weather as well. So that's what it's looking like um, when it comes in terms of our winter forecast. If you have any questions, please post them below. Um, oh yeah, I was going to show you one more, one more thing. I just want to bring us over to AccuWeather.com. And I know a lot of meteorologists lately have been saying, oh, the fall is going to be cold or warm here. It's, it's not going to be a good fall it's going to be a very warm summer or winter i mean and um that's just what's going on and and a lot of people are continuing to put this out here and i just want to show you and and this is just for my region of the country but i'm one of the regions of the country that they're actually saying hey things are going to be very warm and i just want to show you the general trend over the upcoming days and weeks here and I just want you to I just want you to notice that our warmest day will actually be tomorrow. We will have a very brief warm period when we get into the beginning of uh, October. Like I said, there is a predicted warm spell for that for that period of time. But 
all of next week will be below average. I mean, um, I mean, look at, I mean, we're our average is into the 70s and will be generally into the 60s the whole week. Um, we get towards the end of the month, and yes, that's when we might go a little bit above average. And then after that, um, whoops, let's go to the month here. After that, moving on to October, it, at this particular point, I mean, it's looking like generally below average. Yeah, we might go a little bit above average between the 10th and the 14th, actually between the 10th and the 15th, but we'll have to see what happens. Um, there's definitely, um, you know, s still several weeks before things will actually come out and, um, you know, it's it, there's still time for things to update and this is definitely nothing compared to what we saw last year last year we saw 80s in October um, if we go back to 2011 um, this was a trend last year and I mean look at this I mean we were at record temperatures here um, yeah, so uh, you can see overall we were fairly qu quite above average last October so uh, we we broke records. I mean, we were in the mid 80s. So, if we even do get a little bit above average this October, it's not going to be anything like last year. I know this upcoming I know this upcoming October will be much cooler than than last October, um, and also a little bit more on the wet side as well. So that's what's going on when it comes in terms of the fall. I know some people have been wondering about that. Uh, still, I'm thinking the fall will be average. And thus far, it has been. Uh, that's what I predict it to be over the upcoming weeks. Um, again, we will see maybe a few periods of above average conditions, but overall, below average at to at to around average. You know, maybe a little bit above, maybe a little bit below. It's it's that tra we're in a transition period. We will see periods of warm, but by the time the by the time November rolls around. That is really when things are going to start getting interesting around here. So, but again, right now it looks like my, my forecast is starting to verify. Whether or not it really does yet or not, I'm not sure, but it's looking good. Okay, it's looking good. And, um, you know, we'll have to see what happens. Um, but again, just stay tuned. I will be putting out another um, forecast in October. Um, October will be really when we start zooming things down um, and, and I know people wanted me to make snowfall maps sorry I didn't um, I will make I promise I will put out totals what I think for totals in October um, but I just already made the graphics pre-made these were from the beginning of the month and um, you know that's what's going on but uh, I hope you all have a great rest of or well I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, I will be back, I promise, in October for another winter update. And uh, hopefully uh, things will start really verifying by then and we get a really good understanding. All right, have a great rest of your day, everyone.